I created this series for my thesis. Um, originally wanted to deal with themes of loneliness and isolation and depression and things like that. Um, and in, in order to depict those things and problems that I was having in my own life, um, I chose really bright, saturated backgrounds that were kind of unavoidable, almost creating this, this open space that served as this mass, the kind of cage that figures in um, their own paintings. Um, and, I, and I deal a lot with that, just wanting to go into the series dealing with open space, dealing with color and things like that. Um, and I also like to deconstruct um, shapes and figures quite a bit, um, giving the figures kind of a sense of a uh, paint by numbers feeling. Um, and this, you know, this painting originally um, meaning to be kind of the cityscape to kind of block it in and seem really sterile and deconstructing those shapes down, um, kind of giving the paintings an interesting balance and, you know, using one, one building to cage the figure in as well and make it seem more isolated and, and pinning him more to his area. Um, and I, always, I also paint them with brushes that are far too small than what I should be painting them with to kind of make them seem more jarring and tedious um, for myself, um, kind of making them seem a little more realistic to me or um, kind of expressing my own problems a little more through how I create them. So. Did you use a tape to uh have it so straight? Um, on this one, yeah, I did use tape. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you use some kind of stencil for the figure, or is it just like all composed from... Um, I, I draw everything out first, and, you know, map to figure out how I want it, and then sometimes I will um, just transfer it on, but I don't stencil it. I've done a lot of drawings all the time. I always would carry around a sketchbook and draw them. And I sort of got into ceramics, you know, my first year of college, and they were sort of completely separate, like the drawings and ceramics. Um, and just a few years ago, I did a work in France uh, in ceramics using dipped, um, like, dark clay dipped in light slip and carving through that. And so I was able to find a way to sort of integrate the ceramics with the drawings. From the stuff I did in France, I sort of switched it because I like working in porcelain, so I kind of reversed the stuff I was doing there. I felt like these these images were a little not like too unhappy for me, and I wanted to move into sort of more humorous things, and so I started making three dimensional things that were sort of based on my drawings, and that's what I did here, sort of working with people and their like awkwardness or humor or their social like interactions. There's a lot of love of texture I see in here when I look at you know everything from the the brick, which is that something you made or is that from the kiln? Um, I just found it in the kiln yard. <laughs> okay, so then the rest of the, so it's like that texture to the pants, to the, that's a beautiful texture on that. Yeah. So, and then up to the, whose hair is that? Um, it's mine. Yeah. <laughs> just curious. Yeah. How did you attach the uh, figure to the uh, brick wall? Well, I made him, when I first made him, he actually stood on his own, but I knew that wasn't very safe. Um, and I put holes in his feet, and then my friend drilled holes in the brick for me, and I put these little metal rods, rods in there, and also some epoxy. <laughs> and Autumn, you said that these are, if this is porcelain. Mm -hmm. So is that, did, is this something where you put the, the, the slip or the, the glaze or on top and then scratch through, uh -huh. much like a scratch board? Yeah, yeah, I just threw the uh -huh. plates and then covered it in the black slip and then. Oh carved it. From the end of high school I started drawing in this kind of similar style. It started out from me just doodling in class but that kind of took a life of its own and became my own art, art style. For my senior year I did a series called 50 Steps Back to Square One which is um, a 50 drawing piece that I started a new drawing every I've started and finished the drawing within seven days and kept on doing that uh, continuously until from the beginning to the end of the semester and ended up with a 50 drawing series. And, and I kind of wanted to, it's, I use these drawings as a record of my time while I'm alive, while I'm going through life. Um, a lot of these drawings are mostly um, unguided. I, do not plan out what they're going to look like in the end. They're very much free-flowing uh, drawings that I just do on the spot. 
um, I, in the beginning, I plant the circles in the drawings and then start from that, as, use that as a seed to kind of grow drawings out of it, which becomes metaphor of life as well as how we record, how we don't really know what's going, how I don't know how things are going to happen in the future. I just kind of go with the flow. I titled this series um, The Midair Chronicles because, for one thing, I actually traveled back and forth from Japan during this time, and also I feel like my life's kind of in, kind of up in the air, I don't know what's going on. And other times there's just a very uh, subconscious cues that later make sense to me as a reference to that time period of my life. This case is from my most recent body of work titled The Poetics of Imagery, and I'm also a writer, and for a long time I've been trying to like combine my art and my writing in some way, shape, or form. And this came about by trying to construct a kind of poem through various images. And so in this body of work, I was breaking down the canvas into different sections so that I could explore different ideas in each um, section and see how they work together as a whole, kind of like creating a poem in itself. And um, this piece, is kind of about relationships and the different um, levels and layers that exist within relationships. And um, it also draws heavily from magical realism because there's definitely another space and time and it has a very distinct atmosphere. Well, these two panels, this kind of works with um, what's above the surface and what's below. So on the top, you have these two trees that are kind of separated, but they also work as a whole. And then underneath, um, I was playing with the idea of root systems and the kind of rituals that go on beneath the surface that no one ever re like really sees and we don't always understand, but they kind of exist. It reminds me a lot of like medieval um, kind of rituals painted and monks and things too. So I was inspired by that as well. And so this and this this sort of the band of runes or symbols. Mm -hmm. Uh, those are, do they have any specific meaning or, or you have, uh, they just sort of, uh, just, just to suggest those things? Um, it suggests that. I drew definitely from the kind of medieval, like the elaborate borders and things that are in those kind of paintings, but um, they're not any specific runes or anything that I, but that's kind of the a fun element to play with is how a poem could work visually, but it's a completely different language than words. For sure. What was your thought about the moths? Um, that was just kind of another way of um, putting two forms together, but they're kind of trapped together in this web. So there's a lot of layers of being kind of tied together, but also two distinct beings or forms. Like the trees are distinct, but then um, you also have the figures that are chained together on one side, but on the other side they're both offering something. <laughs>